Red 2 standing by, all four lit, and in the green, welcome back to Metroid Prime Remastered. Where we're heading through the phase on mines, ready to claim the power bombs at long last. We have to come through here, we can get another pickup, but we get a little cutscene where we wind up triggering a security response. Deadly gas and puffers. This is a good grinding spot if you know where to stand. But as you can see, it's very poisonous. If we go in here, we have a horrible visible stench that I have not seen since I, since the last time I visited a certain card shop down in Melbourne. The stench of unwashed nerd haunts my nightmares still. It's either that or it's the sort of atmosphere in pretty much every high school PE room. The sheer amount of Lynx body spray contaminating the atmosphere. Ugh. So, we'll move on. Hello and goodbye. Now there is another one that drops down there as I was trying to get that one to appear. And there we are. Down here, on the other hand... Power Troopers. And we can bust them. There's another one. But if we go down here, we'll be able to... Open this force field. And get the last one. Another one? Nope, they just wanted to keep the music going a little bit. Well, more pirate data, I think. Elite Pirate Upsilon's propensity for Phazon has enabled our research team to infuse it far beyond our safety restrictions. Why does it not surprise me they'd do something like that? The results have been extremely encouraging. Its constant Phazon diet has increased its mass exponentially, but it has retained all mental faculties and shows dexterity with all elite weaponry, including plasma incendiary launchers and the chameleon manta issued for cloaking purposes. Elite Pirate Upsilon exhibits miraculous healing abilities. When injured, it seeks out phazon deposits and coats itself in the substance, which instantly mends the creature's wounds. The subject, which we are codenaming Omega Pirate based on these developments, shows potential to be a new standard for our armies. Our only concern at this point is its potential over-dependence on Phazon. So I think that's pretty much it for research for now. And we can keep on our merry way. Thankfully we don't have to fight too many more elite pirates. There is one we battle on the way back. Pop down here. And there's an elite pirate tucked away in there. But we are finally at our destination. So, now you should see or hear this. This is the cloaked drone. It is not scannable, it is not able to be locked onto. It is. A regular enemy, but it's just invisible. You can only see those lights and you have to aim manual. Or... You can fry it with the Wave Buster. Which I recommend doing because that saves time. Now that we have dragged ourselves through the phase on mines, it is time to get the power bombs. And this maze was actually a little project that one of the developers made. They'd made it from another source, but they adapted it into this game. Because the maze is actually randomized. There are about 300 different combinations for this maze, give or take. It's extremely well done. 
a really creative little aspect that adds to the challenge. Sometimes you will need to drop a bomb in the water in order to proceed. But we have to slowly make our way through, not taking too much damage, and get to the center of the maze. Have I done this right? Yep, so if I go through here. So we've collected the power bombs, but there's a bit of a problem. This cutscene actually uses one of our power bombs. We have four power bombs as our maximum capacity, and this uses one, so we start off with three. Which sucks. So, this is the way out, but we can't go through here yet because we need the X-ray visor. Don't bother with that just yet. Oh, fortunately you do get some pickups here. Make sure to scan the power bomb ammunition. Resupplies power bomb with one, one round of ammo. Now, we have four. And we can make our way out of this area. That door over there is the save room. I'm going to top up my energy. You will be so grateful to see this after so long. This is the longest stretch in the game without a save room. It's quite simply a nightmare. If you don't know what you're doing, it's trouble. But now that we have it, we can try and proceed, but we won't get very far. You have to come back here when you have the x-ray visor, as I said. But we will also need to go and get the grapple beam, which is nearby. In the sense that it's accessible, it's in the room with the 10 billion barrel puzzle. So don't worry, we don't fight this guy yet. We do when we come back here again. But now we fight the elite pirate that was in the wonky tank. So we'll just wait for a little bit. And there we go, he's dead. So yeah, elite pirates really aren't that challenging to deal with. You can take care of their plasma cannon if you want. You can also jump over here and unlock the map station. Which I shall. Oh, that's fortunate. They actually gave me some ammo. But yeah, elite pirates really aren't that hard to deal with if you know what you're doing. You can dodge their cannon shots fairly easily. Their main shockwave attack is pretty simple to deal with. Assuming you don't just switch off. I mean, mind you, we've all accidentally strafed into it once or twice. I'm not going to lie. And, yeah, they're, they're big targets. You can easily take out their cannon if you need to. Or you can just focus and time your attacks right and shoot them in the head. There are worse opponents. Now... In the, in the poison gas room, blow open that vent, and...
scan this to activate the extractor fans which will drag all the puffers into it. Conveniently, that allows us to go and grab an energy tank. Very nice to have. So we've got 11 tanks out of 14. We are doing very well in that regard. I've been pretty diligent on that because you want as many as you can get going in here. Ah, yes. Now we've got Shadow Pirates. But they are easy to deal with. It's almost insulting after having to deal with all those irritating... Uh, Beam Troopers. Shadow Pirates are simple. It's like a reward for having gone through hell. Of course, they do actually have enough intelligence to come after you, which is a little bit of a nuisance. Oh wait, you actually are alive. You're not just the corpse of your buddy. Oh well. Uh... Has he actually realised... Well that was an embarrassing little turn for him. There we go. Now we can... We do need to go through here because that's the correct way. Now we can blast open that that particular door, but we're not going to do it just yet. Because we should do that when we come back this way. We don't have to deal with the pirates going this way, thankfully. And this should be... Ah, oh, the elevator. So we've got a bit of work to do, but we need to go this way because we have to pick up the grapple beam. It's important to pick that up because without it we can't get one of the two major items we need. Once we've left this area, we need to go and get the x-ray visor because we need that to proceed, and we also need the plasma beam. The plasma beam is always, always worth it. So just make your way carefully past the streams. Thankfully that caught. Now, do we have any enemies in here? I don't think we do. You'll need a couple of power bombs. Because the door to the gravity beam is on... Not gravity, gra grapple beam. Brain switched off. I'm a little tired. I've been at this for a while. So, rotate that one. The door to the grapple beam is indeed blocked off by Bendesia. You can concentrate on this puzzle in peace and quiet. And we've got a lot of pickups to go after this, so I recommend once we actually get out of here, go get kitted up even more. Find everything we can and then go back in. Because dealing with this place really does suck. I think that's got it lined up. There we are. Find the yellow one and away we go. Up to the highest reaches of this room. Yep. Drop down. And the scourge that is Bendesium 
can finally be removed because we get the grapple beam. Now there is a shortcut room we can go to, so I'll put that on the map and then we're fine. Pretty cool cutscene admittedly. Grapple beam acquired. No space jump and no, no screw attack. Not in this one. So we've got them all. The grapple beam allows you to swing back and forth from special points of the environment. Grapple points appear on your visor as a grapple icon. Press and hold L or ZR to find the grapple beam. Hold it down to stay connected. Let go to release. Samus notes the grapple beam can be used to cross large gaps. Use the control stick while grappling to swing in different directions. So, scan these. Analysis indicates a viable attach point for the grapple beam. To use the grapple beam, use those buttons, blah blah blah. Across we go, and this is normally the way out. Now we can go out this way and save ourselves a bit of trouble in terms of power bomb usage. But probably better stock up if we go back down here then we can actually go to where we need to be faster so we'll move on down we go. And I'll meet you back in that tunnel where we wound up running into Bendesium. Okay, luckily I got a couple of powerbomb pickups. Because we will need a couple. Make our way through here and we can proceed... To an area with regular space pirates. Right down in the deepest, darkest parts of the Phazon Mines. Now, there are some turrets on the ceiling. You can hear that sound. No pickups, but... Missile expansion behind that wall. Normally the X-ray visor will help you. Good. Got rid of that one. Now I do have to go the long way back up because there are invisible platforms. That hurt. That I can't do much about otherwise. Let's see. I've probably flubbed this. But this room is right at the heart of phase on mining operations. We will need to come back here, and we will do so via natural pathway. But you definitely want to get rid of the turrets. And the space pirates because they can take pot shots at you. There's nothing but the ambient sound of phase on radiation in here, and it's a little sinister in some ways. How can I see that? Take out that turret too because you don't want to get shot at. We've got a lot of work to do climbing up. It's a little bit dangerous and we've got to stick our jumps. But if we go through here, this is where the Phazon Mines links to Magmore Caverns. And we want to be in Magmore Caverns. Because that's where we get the Plasma Beam. Made it. I 
am understandably very afraid of falling off. Given that I have such incredible trouble sticking my landings, the fact there's a moving platform here... That makes me happy. Very nice. We're out of here. And we can do multiple swings. And we're back. Approaching the Magmore workstation where we got an energy tank earlier on. And where we came through from Fendrana Drifts just after Thardis' chamber. So, um, bear with me a moment. We do have to make our way through this tunnel. We do at least get power bomb ammo, but we're pretty well stocked on that. Okay, I think what I want to do is actually go and get get the plasma beam first so that we've got an easy time of doing things. Because you're going to want it, it's really handy, and it will make things so satisfying. a little bit to go. Through here. You, you probably saw that the uh, puddle spores are gone. Through here. Grapple across here. And the journey begins. These are actually spinners. Activate this and our puzzle theme starts. We have a lot of careful and precarious work to do. So I'll probably wind up not too long after getting the plasma beam. Because I am getting a little worn out. It's been a pretty intense session in all fairness. I've got a lot done. Much better. I think I'm doing much better than I was last time. Alright, lo that's locked in. And we're nearly at the sun. How did I wind up doing that? Whoa! Okay, better I fall off now. Better I fall off now than uh, when we've done the rest of it. Alright, so you cannot easily lock on two grapple beam points when you are in midair. That sucks. There's a maximum distance. Oh, you've got to be joking. Oh my god, this is exactly what made me give up when I did the original recording. Falling off and getting incinerated because I made it all the way up to the plasma beam and then fell off. Line myself up. Now we're good. Now we're good. Now I move very carefully. Good, and now we can activate the Morph Ball Bomb slot and begin a long journey. The room gets bigger. I think there is a speed running trick to get past this somehow. but we're on a very big morph ball journey. You have to make death-defying drops, timing everything just right, and traverse 
this tedious path. And make sure you don't get knocked off by the plated parasites either. I nearly got hit. They are vulnerable to more fall bombs. And I do recommend trying to kill them if you really need, need to pick ups. Otherwise, try your best to stay out of their way. Roll down. Hold R going down that slope. This is very much a bad time if things go wrong. You can move across the metal bits. Try not to accidentally jump off. But be careful of the fact that Parasite's movement is a little bit random. I am given my tendency to fall off things. I am approaching this with absolute terror. I do not like this bit. It's, it's very tense, it's very stressful, it's a very long way back up if you make a mistake. And I don't want to have to scream. Now you can use a power bomb on these railings and do so. Oh good, we made it. Welcome to the best weapon in the game, the Plasma Beam. It looks awesome and it hits like a truck. So, we'll get the information on it. The Plasma Beam fires streams of molten energy. This beam can ignite flammable objects and enemies. Use left on the C-Stick to select the Plasma Beam as your weapon. Fire the Plasma Beam to open Plasma Doors. The Plasma Beam is very effective against cold-based enemies. Charge the Plasma Beam to fire a sphere of plasma. Enemies struck by this blast will be engulfed in flames for a few moments. Well, when we say that, I think we can demonstrate exactly what happened. Now, the Plasma Beam... Now, as you can see, the Ice Beam covers this room. The Wave Beam. All of those make it across. The Plasma Beam does not. Unless you charge it. The Plasma Beam is somewhat short range as it's shortcoming, dare I say. But... It makes up for that. Note that it probably might not affect a lot of fire based enemies. It does still affect puddle spores, which is nice. Now we get to see. Now we are the destroyer. So, enemies burn. It burns! They incinerate. Very strong enemies will be engulfed in flames. Most enemies will be burned to a crisp by the power of the plasma beam. It's just that good. Unless you need to use a specific weapon for a specific circumstance, you will use the Plasma Beam. So I'm going to get one more thing to show you just what we're doing. Just how good this thing is. Alrighty, so we can go and get a missile expansion by swinging across here. 
And then I'm going to go and pick on some enemies. Please go in the hole. So, missile expansion that we can finally do something with. And then we can explore the rest of this area. I will go back and get the, the equipment we normally... We'd need normally. Now, where's that she gone? I landed on it. So. Notice how we can just assail the Shegon. And it will die. The Shegoth is nothing against the might of the Plasma Beam. You can roast it effortlessly. The sheer satisfaction you will get from using this weapon is phenomenal. It pretty much trivializes combat. It's very fitting that this, the most powerful weapon of the lot, probably has the crappiest charge combo. Yeah, one of them just incinerated. Like, you won't have to worry about dealing with irritating enemies. They'll burn up. No suicide strikes from your pirates. They burn. And we can at least look at the glowing plasma getting a bit more intense. Not quite as spectacular as the ice beam, but good nonetheless. Anyway, that's a good spot to stop. We have all our power bombs, our missiles are full. There's still a bit more to find and we'll look around. Thank you very much for joining me. Till next time, this is Red 2, returning to base. And I fell off one more time just for all of you.